normally the SA node is base maker of the heart so it is responsible for the heart rate and the rhythm sinus tachycardia is diagnosed by heart rate more than 100 beats per minute and sinus bradycardia is diagnosed by heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute sometimes there is some irregularity in the sinus rhythm this is called sinus arrhythmias respiratory sinus arrhythmias is the most common cause the heart rate will increase with inspiration and decrease with expiration here is the first thing this is the sinus pause or sinus arrest this condition occurs when the SA node fails to initiate the impulse in a certain cycle this can occur normally during sleep periods but may be due to hypoxia and MI or ischemia or hyperkalemia or gitalis toxicity or drug overdose especially of those like beta blockers calcium channel blockers it appears on the ECG as absence of unexpected B wave with absence also of its following QRS complex it may be followed by a QRS complex with its impulse originating from the atrium or the AV junction or ventricles as skip rhythm here is an example here this is a sinus beat and this is another sinus beat and here where we should expect another beat here there is no B wave and then there is no QRS complex of course at the expected place but because there is a pause here the AV junction starts to act as a base maker here and it initiates an escape rhythm narrow complex here this is an indication that the impulse is coming from the junction not the ventricles otherwise it would be white complex so this complex is a escape rhythm or escape beat without B wave after a pause and then sinus beat followed again so this is a case of sinus pause or sinus arrest with escape beat from the AV junction premature atrial beat or what's called atrial extrastole it occurs earlier than the normal expected beat and followed by pause which is named compensatory pause it appears on the ECG as the following it is a normally shaped cycle this one B wave is there we will find B wave it occurs earlier than should be expected and it is followed by a compensatory pause so it is identical cycle but it occurs earlier and followed by pause exactly as if you moved a normal beat a little bit backward so it became more near to the previous beat and became more far from the following beat this is atrial extrastole paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia we can diagnose supraventricular tachycardia if we have three or more successive premature atrial beats three or more successive premature atrial beats with a heart rate more than 100 we can diagnose supraventricular tachycardia type the first one is atrial tachycardia the ECG will be similar to that of sinus tachycardia but heart rate will be from 100 to 250 beats per minute it is very difficult to differentiate between atrial tachycardia and sinus tachycardia on the ECG AV nodal reentrant tachycardia or AVNRT the impulse here is originating from the AV nodal area we mean by the impulse we mean the ectopic impulse that caused this arrhythmias it has a round course which is called circus movement if we can remember from physiology circus movement tachycardia this is one of the mechanisms producing the arrhythmias heart rate is between 140 to 200 beats per minute in the ECG it would appear as the following heart rate from 140 to 200 beats per minute it will be a regular and this is very very important differentiating point between different types of arrhythmias here the rhythm will be regular so tachycardia because it's a tachycardia heart rate is more than 140 to 200 and it is regular B waves will be absent may be buried within the QRS complex or sometimes we can find it before the QRS complex or 
after QRS complex and it will be inverted in this case because it is coming from the AV node upward to the atrium so it is the reverse of what is happening in normal situations so it will be picked up by electrodes and it will be recorded in the ECG leads as inverted wave so here this example you can see that heart rate is very high it's almost 170 or 180 because we because it's regular here we can divide 300 by the number of big boxes between two successive hours and then we can't see any B wave here and the rhythm is regular so this is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia it is very important to differentiate between this type of arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response will have also a high heart rate will be tachycardia there will no be any B waves so the only differentiating point is the rhythm here it is regular and in atrial fibrillation it will be irregular atrioventricular re-entrant tachycardia this type is associated with certain conditions in which there is an accessory pathway from the atrium to the ventricles other than the normal pathway which is the AV junction this accessory pathway may be located anteriorly or posteriorly relative to the AV junction. This pathway allows the impulse to reach the ventricles without the physiological delay that occurs in the AV junction. This pathway may act also as a re-entrant pathway for the impulse from the ventricles to the atrium backwards. This is known as pre-excitation syndrome or WBW syndrome or LDL syndrome. This is how it appears on the ECG because as we said there is an accessory pathway allowing some of the electrical activity to reach the ventricles through it without passing through the AV node with its physiological delay so the impulse will be transmitted to the ventricles earlier than it should be that's why QRS complex will start to appear earlier than it should be so depolarization of the ventricles will start earlier but because the accessory busway cannot carry the whole electrical activity from the atria to the ventricles some of the electrical activity will pass leading to a weak upstroke of the QRS complex that's why here we can find a very short BR interval it is almost the B wave then there is no BR segment and then we will find a slurred upstroke here of the QRS complex then the sharp QRS complex will ensue so the end result that we will have a short BR interval, a wide QRS complex, a delta wave which is this slurred upstroke. Delta wave is due to the early relatively weak depolarization that occurs due to the early reaching impulse by the accessory pathway. So these are the triad of diagnosing WBW syndrome, short BR, wide QRS complex and delta wave. In these cases, we should avoid using any of the following medications, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, or digitalis. Why? These agents block the conduction in the AV node, so it can increase the conduction through the accessory pathway. Since we will block the AV nodal conduction pathway, all the electric activity can pass through the accessory pathway leading to a very serious and maybe fatal and lethal arrhythmias like VF and VT. So what is the solution? Treatment should be by agents that can affect both the AV nodal pathway and the accessory pathway like amiodarone or sotalol or by intervention like ablation of the accessory pathway. This is an example here. We can see a very wide QRS complex from the base and a very short BR interval and a slurred upstroke of the QRS complex. So short BR, wide QRS complex, a delta wave. Atrial flutter. The pacemaker here in atrial flutter is not the SA node. It will be ectopic. The stimulation rate in atrial flutter will be about 300 beats, beats, beats per minute. Fluttering of the atria will be at a rate of 
300 beats per minute. The ventricle rate depends on the ability of the AV junction to transmit impulses to the ventricles. Thus, if the AV junction transmits all impulses from the atria to the ventricles, the ventricular rate in this case will be the same as that of the ectopic focus, but this is not the case. Usually, the ventricular rate in atrial flutter is about 150 or 100 or 75 beats per minute. If the block is regular, atrial flutter with ventricular response 150 beats per minute is called 2 to 1 flutter. Why 2 to 1? Because the ratio between atrial and ventricular rate is 2 to 1. As we said, 300 atrial stimulation and 150 ventricular rate, so 300 to 150 equals 2 to 1. Atrial flutter with ventricular response of 75 beats per minute is called 4 to 1 flutter. 300 to 75 equals 4 to 1 flutter. Here we have some examples here. Atrial flutter will be regular in the rhythm if the block is fixed, because sometimes we will have variable work, sometimes like in this case. Here is 2 to 1, for example, and here is 3 to 1 block, and here is 2 to 1 block. How to diagnose atrial flutter from the ECG? It will be regular, as we said, except if there is variable block, we will have flutter waves or F waves, which is very famous to be called Sotos appearance. This pattern, Sotos appearance, which is called flutter waves. And F waves are usually in the opposite direction of the QRS complex. So this QRS complex is positive, so the flutter waves will be negative. That's why we said this rhythm is 2 to 1 block. And here the QRS complex is negative. So the, these upstrokes are the flutter waves, one, two, three.